What's up, everybody? It's Justin. Welcome to Live Ask Me Anything. Hold on, I'm getting situated here. Things look a little bit different, right? Not this hand. Other hand. The screen is reversed. Look. Flowers. I've redecorated my house. This is totally my personality. And on this side, we have weird little Amish people with no faces and a hutch full of crystal and stuff. Because this is my bachelor pad that I live in. Just kidding, guys. I'm at mom's house. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Hey, I got to do this really quick. Um, I'm going to add my Clovis story to my Justin Nault story. That's important to do, okay, on Instagram to make sure that everybody swipes up and joins us here in the live group. I got a swipe up feature because I got like 21,000 followers. It's no big deal or anything. I don't usually throw that number around, but, you know, this time I did. Oh, you guys are sending me new questions, too, like sending questions at 8 p.m. What you doing here? Let's see what we got. All right, this guy I'm going to put over here. Make sure that that's on the Justin Nault page. We got some new uh, questions rolling in, apparently. You guys are sending questions in at the the last minute. So let's see what those are all about. Um, we've got some good questions, some things coming in, because I don't have anything prepared tonight. So we're just going to go, I mean, I don't know what's it called. I guess improvisation, right? We're going to improv. That's the word I was looking for. I'm a musician. I shouldn't have known that. So we're going to improv this thing. So there's new questions rolling in. As you guys send questions in from ama.iamclovis.com, they get sent into my Evernote inbox automatically because I'm a productivity nerd, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. So we'll take a look at these ones that just rolled in after I got a couple here that I was going to touch on that I thought were pretty cool that I just checked out, making sure GarageBand is running. That's running live. Everyone's here. What's up, Judy? What's up, Laura? What's up, Michelle? What's up, Shannon? What's up, Randy? What's up, Jennifer? What's up, everybody? You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for being here. AMA number 79. So I don't know how, uh, one, I don't know how AMA 79 is going to go because we got nothing prepped. Two, I don't know how to top AMA number 78. Crazy. Uh, I don't listen back to my AMAs. I will just put like the intro on them, like an outro if they need it. I usually don't do an outro, um, but I usually just throw an intro up. I'm going to put this in airplane mode. Um, I'll throw an intro up and then just post it. So I don't actually listen back to the AMAs, but AMA 78, I listened back to because I got so upset during it and I was like really spent after I was really tired. So I was like, I'm going to go back and check out, you know, what the deal was. There was a lot of ranting, a lot of yelling, lots of profanity. Um, but that always happens when I'm talking about kids. So if you haven't seen AMA number 78, that is called your kids are a science experiment. I think it may in my head right now, it's officially the single most important piece of content I've ever made. So if you haven't checked out AMA number 78, Your Kids Are a Science Experiment, it's live on the Clovis Culture Podcast. I also set up a link. It's just clovis.show slash your kids, Y-O-U-R-K-I-D-S. Clovis.show slash your kids. So it's easy for you to share with people. Here, I'll put a link right here in the comment because we're on the computer today slash your kids. So I think that was a really, really important episode. I think that every parent on earth should listen to that episode. It's super important. And um, oh no, I got a service unavailable thing on that. Uh oh, Clovis show isn't working right. All right, guys, I'll figure that out. Don't worry about it. Um, nice haircut. Thank you. The haircut's old now. I think it's a couple weeks old now. Is it? It's a week old. It's a week old. Yeah, I got a cut before I went to California. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so anyway, okay, Michelle, 78 was amazing. I shared it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. If you're going to pick one episode to share, share that one. And it's going to make people uncomfortable, and they're going to feel like you're judging their parenting. And I finally got to a point where I just go, yeah, I am judging your parenting. Like, if your parenting really sucks, I'm just judging it, you know? Because it's it's not like our parents, everybody. Like, our parents kind of get a pass, honestly. Um, Like, when my dad was feeding me, like, cinnamon sugar toast on white bread with like, I can't believe it's not butter or like crock pot margarine or whatever. Like he genuinely didn't know better. That's like what the science of the time was telling them. Like the science of the time was clearly just like, yes, this is what you want to do. Saturated fat will kill you. Red meat will kill you. It causes cancer, blah, blah, blah. There was no internet when I was three. You know, maybe there was, but it was like, it was just in the early, early stages. It wasn't like e-commerce and influencers, social media. Look at YouTube. YouTube is like 10 years old, everybody. We just exist. We think that these things have been around forever and they haven't been, right? So our parents kind of get a pass. But honestly, if you're a new parent, if you're a millennial parent, you really don't have that many excuses for shoving orange juice and Capri Sun and goldfish and 10 bananas a day down your kid's pie hole. There's just no excuse for it. Like, most nutritionists, even the ones that are like 
normally trained at this point, if they spend any amount of time online, they know that fructose leads to insulin resistance. They, they, they know that fructose is implicated in like everything from insulin resistance to PCOS. So, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, fructose, sorry, I'm blah, blah, spinning my brain. But yeah, fructose is implicated in all sorts of stuff, um, particularly diabetes, particularly non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, particularly PCOS, all these things that magically go away when people do things like fasting and low carbohydrate diets because they finally deplete the liver of glycogen, right? If you just get the sugar out of the liver, you change a lot of things, right? So I just don't understand why it's so difficult at this point. What I'm saying is parents today don't really have an excuse, particularly when there's guys like me out there screaming and I'm always like, hey, fact check me. So what I think I'm gonna do is I just talked to uh, Dr. Ken Berry today and I'm gonna try to get him on and really just go deep into childhood nutrition. And because I've actually never done that on the show with a functional medicine doctor, like a medical doctor. I've just been like, okay, dude, you practice conventional medicine for 10 years and you changed your mind because everyone was sick and dying. And now you do things the way that I do things. And you're a medical doctor, so you can do way more than I do and you can do it way better than I can. So I really think I'm gonna get him on and just talk about these problems of like fructose, why? Because I just can't get parents off fruit. That's like the hardest thing, it's getting parents off fruit and little snack foods like goldfish and stuff. I'm just like, oh my God, your kid doesn't need a snack every two hours. Like this is a marketer sold that to you. Understand that, you know? Um, but anyway, AMA number 78 was amazing. This is number 79. So let's dig into number 79. But real quick, um, something worth noting is there's a new um, Amazon skill for, uh, I don't want to say her name because my mom has one in her house as well. A-L-E-X-A. A-L-E-X-A. If I say it, then she's going to go off and blah, 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 blah. It's gonna mess up the recording. But there's a new Clovis Culture audio experience on Amazon devices. So if you have an Amazon Tap or an Amazon Echo or Echo Dot or any of these things throughout your house, um, you can do your flash briefing in the morning. So my flash briefing in the morning is like Gary V and like a new station and I check on Bitcoin and I check on little things like that, right? Um, flash briefing is really cool. So now my flash briefing starts with me, just a little 60 second clip. I might end up doing longer clips, like maybe you know 90 second clips or whatever, but right now they're just 60 second clips. It's built out for the, like the next 53 days. So you can just start a little uh, Clovis Culture clip first thing in the morning, right? Um, I did realize that I don't bleep out profanity. So if you have kids, maybe wait till the kiddos are off to school before you <laughs> check in on the Clovis Culture podcast, uh, Clovis Culture audio experience. That's what I call it, Clovis Culture audio experience. We got new people joining, Aaron, Jackie, Tammy, what's up? Elizabeth, Clint. All right, so let's dig in. This first question, AMA number 79. Let me rearrange my screen here. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. I thought GarageBand crapped out on me for a second, but it didn't. Okay, so the first one is more of an observation. So I got a lot of questions that were super similar. And a lot of these questions are similar to the first email that I'll get from a new client. So this is particularly good for those of you that are new to Clovis who just got your custom plan, or maybe you're just in the I Am Clovis membership portal and you haven't gotten a custom plan, you're trying to decide what to do, um, and you're just worried about this being like a new fad or something like that. What I really wanna talk about is the way that every single email starts. And every single email, well, not necessarily how it starts, it usually ends with this. This is usually the last paragraph. So every email that I get, and I will say, hands down, this is more women than men. Men usually like to talk to me about their college days. That's their first couple paragraphs is what an amazing super athlete they were in college and now they're 400 pounds, right? That's like what the guys love to tell me. Um, and then the women like to give me a full blown history lesson of everything that is, let's just call her Jane, right? Everything that is Jane. I'm going to get a full blown history lesson on the last 30 years of Jane's life. That's the first client email, right? And that's awesome. That gives me a lot of data to go off of. I actually like that. It's very cool, right? So if we get this kind of long story, then what the story usually looks like is the last 10 years has been a nightmare. The last 10 years, everything has fallen apart. They don't get it. They used to be skinny. Now they had a kid and they're gaining weight uncontrollably or after their first kid, they lost the weight, no problem. Second way, now they're ballooning out of control and they've tried P90X and they've tried insanity and they've tried bodybuilding and they had a trainer and Pilates and yoga and this diet and that diet and paleo and keto and this and blah, 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 right? The last 10 years have just been a nightmare. And then they will always end with a phrase that I call, when I was at my fittest, I was doing X. And what I mean by fittest is people used to say when I was fit, right? They just think that they were fit. They weren't actually fit. Their brain's playing tricks on them, but they thought they were fit because it was the most quote unquote 
healthy in their mind. It was the most healthy that they had ever been at this particular period in their life. What they're not realizing is they're just confusing, confusing smaller with fit or smaller with healthy. They're just like, when I was at my smallest, that's what they should be saying. Like when my pant size was the smallest, I was doing X, right? And they don't notice the correlation that I see because they haven't worked with a thousand clients, right? After working with all these hundreds and hundreds of women, what I see is they will say like the last 10 years has been a nightmare. And let's just, let's just call it 10 years because that's easy math, right? So usually they'll say the last 10 years has been absolute hell on earth. It's been a nightmare. My, all my health is in the toilet. It's been terrible, right? And when they were at their fittest or their healthiest or their smallest, it was like exactly 10 years and six months ago. Right, like six months before everything went to hell in a handbag, that was when they were at their skinniest or at their fittest or whatever, right? And they don't realize that. So they're just looking back on it like, oh my God, I fit into size two pants and it was amazing and life was incredible. What they don't remember is that they were all starving themselves. They were all on super low fat, high carbohydrate diets. The systemic inflammation was probably off the charts. They were probably relying on caffeine and other stimulants. Their adrenals were in the toilet. They may have had things like hair loss or brittle nails. Their sleeping might have sucked. They might have had terrible mood swings. Their periods might have been weird. I bet if you asked the rest of their family, they probably would have been like, oh my God, yes, she was obsessed. She was weighing chicken breasts and freaking Sean T from Insanity was on my damn TV twice a day or Tony Horton from P90X. Like the husbands are always like, if I hear Tony Horton's voice one more time, like I'm going to put my head through a wall. Like they're not realizing that they were living this OCD obsessive life, doing everything the mainstream told them to do. And you can keep that up for a little while. Okay. So you have to understand that this, this idea that you have in your head of like, I was healthiest when X really just means skinny. I was skinniest when X and what you were sacrificing to get there was tremendous. So when we talk about the roller coaster, like this health and wellness roller coaster, um, the, the weight loss roller coaster that all women go on, the average woman tries at least seven diets in their lifetime. Why is it that people don't stick to fitness and nutrition protocols? Really think about it. Remove the dogma. Why is it that people don't stick to fitness and nutrition protocols long term? They quit because the protocol is making them miserable. That's it. That's the big, oh my God, right? That's the, the big giant epiphany that we have is these programs make people miserable. They can't follow a low fat, low calorie diet with tons of cardio exercise forever because it sucks, everybody. It really, really sucks. If it didn't suck, You'd be saying, I was at my healthiest. Well, we wouldn't even be talking in the first place. We wouldn't be talking at all if your fitness and nutrition protocol didn't suck because you'd still be doing it and you would be healthy. Instead, you're reaching out to Justin from Clovis for desperate health because you tried everything and it doesn't work. And you're, at, you're asking me why I just can't stick to a fitness and nutrition protocol because the protocol sucks. We have it in our heads in America that to be healthy, you have to sacrifice everything good. You can't eat anything yummy. You have to work out every day doing workouts that you hate. Things like chronic cardio, steady state cardio, blow my brains out. It's so boring, right? You can't do anything that you like to do, period. You can't go out drinking with your friends. You can't eat fatty, delicious foods. You can't eat any carbohydrates. You just, it, it's miserable. You're going to be miserable every day, right? Low calorie, low fat, low carbohydrate, whatever it is, work out, sweat, 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 burn calories. It's just miserable. Everybody knows that it's miserable. That's why they can't stick to it. So I just want you guys to understand if you're new coming into this, you're going to tell me your story. I hope you tell me your story because sometimes I can pick little things out of stories that people don't realize. They just like gave me their 30 year history and I'll see one thing like, oh my God, I'm so happy you told me that. This is critically important. You know, so those, those stories are good with the custom nutrition plans. But um, I just want you to remember that the brain plays tricks on you. We know this from police, right? Like eyewitness reporting is like the least credible thing that you can rely on as a detective or something. It's like two people will see the same human being and describe them completely differently. Your friends from childhood, if you ever think about like a story, maybe you're hanging out with a friend you haven't seen in 10 years and they're like, remember that time we were at that bar and you kicked that guy in the head? That was hilarious. And you're like, I've literally never kicked a human in my head. 
in the head ever. I've never done that. Like, what are you talking about? Things, people remember things differently, right? Your husband might've wanted to divorce you when you were at your skinniest and super fit and obsessed with Tony Horton. You know, you just didn't know it, you know? So you think back on things in a very different way and it confuses you. The brain, the brain plays tricks on you. So one, don't correlate healthy with skinny because that's just stupid. And two, um, don't let your brain trick you in terms of when you were at your healthiest because then what happens, it's like a crack addict. This is the only way I can describe it. It's like a crack addict smokes crack for the first time and it's like that was the most amazing thing ever and the rest of their life they spend chasing, they call it chasing the dragon in terms of addicts, right? They chase the dragon. They try to get back to that. You're chasing a, you're chasing a dragon that doesn't exist. You're chasing the dragon that you thought was health and wellness and it doesn't exist because it was never there. You did this program for three months or four months or whatever, and you were like, oh my God, I looked so good. Like, I could see a little bit of abs in the mirror. I was so healthy. And you're not looking at your health at all. Like, if we compared blood work between then and now, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't, you don't actually know if you were healthy then. So don't let your brain play tricks on you. And that happens with men as well. The men are just like, I was a division one college athlete and I had six pack abs in, in college and now they're 30 and literally over 300 pounds. I have a lot of Division one, division one male athletes, by the time they get to me, they're usually 300 pounds. I'm not kidding. Like I'm not just choosing an, a, I'm not choosing a weight or like exaggerating. I'm telling you, particularly football players. If I deal with division one men that were division one football players, if they come to me by like age 30, they're probably over 300 pounds. Um, Cause they just think that everything they were doing in college was amazing because they were an athlete. It's like, no dude, you were 19. What are we talking about here? You know, so it's just the blame, the brain plays tricks on you and you chase that dragon, that division one college football player is like, I'm going to eat the same thing I ate all through college and I'm going to do that for the next 10 years. And now they're 315 pounds and they need Justin. So just something worth thinking about you guys is that you just, the brain plays tricks on you. Why is Clovis so easy to follow? Cause it's enjoyable. It's amazing. You feel good, right? If you felt good on your kill yourself, low calorie diet, you'd still be doing it. You would. If something makes you feel amazed, that's why I tell people why I don't like cheat days. I'm addicted to feeling good. When I wake up in the morning, I want to be Justin's version of 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. An average person's 10 is my 2, and I never want to be their 2. So I live my particular way because their 10 is my 2. You see what I'm saying? You don't even know how good you can feel until you feel that good and then you become addicted to it. So there's a reason why there are people in this room, in this Facebook Live right now, that have watched all 79 of my Ask Me Anythings. These are weekly Ask Me Anythings, and I've skipped weeks in between. So this is easily over 80 weeks that I've been doing this, and I've had people with me from day one of AMAs that still love Clovis, that still live Clovis, that tell their friends about Clovis, right? Think about New Year's resolutions. They say that by the first week of February, virtually the entire country is done with their New Year's resolutions. By the first week of February. Some people, it's less than 14 days they give up on their New Year's resolutions. I've had people for over 80 weeks. When a program is awesome and makes you feel good and you get to eat delicious food every day and not run on a treadmill, sign me up. Sign a lot of people up. Hence the growth of Clovis, which I'm trying very hard to manage right now. That is basically... My entire day is devoted to how do I manage this influx of people <laughs> um, trying to figure it out. But anyway, yeah, there's something, there are hundreds of members and I'm close at this point. It's really cool. I like it. But anyway, so that's just a little uh, tangent on new people that come in and they tell me about their, their life and their health and everything. Tell me their story. It's awesome. But I just want to point out that trend for you is everybody thinks once upon a time I was X. If you're not that anymore, then it means then what you were doing to create X was no longer sustainable, and now you're with me, so let's find something that was sustainable, right? It's very, very important. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, this is a cool one. I wanted to touch on this. This will be quick. It says, hi, Justin. Wondering if you are still loving your aura ring, and if you think this is the best tracker out there. I've had mine for six months now and enjoy the sleep data it gives me. It seems pretty accurate to me, but I wanted to know your thoughts if you had any updated insights. Yes, always have updated insights. So one, it's still on, right? I'm obsessed with this thing. I absolutely love the Aura Ring for me, for my lifestyle. This is the best tracker on the market, yes. And I have compared all of them and I've talked to the different companies and I've talked about them sending me stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I know a lot of uh, CrossFit people and I know a lot of power lifters. Like we have a, a professional strongman in the group that uses a Whoop bracelet. So I hear really good things about Whoop, W-H-O-O-P. 
I think that the Aura Ring is the most accurate sleep tracker. I am actually very confident of that. And it still might not be completely accurate in terms of sleep cycles, uh, when your deep sleep is, when your REM sleep is, but it is the most accurate sleep tracker on the market, the most, the most accurate wearable. Um, there are these crazy sleep devices that they use in like sleep wards, like sleep clinics and stuff that you can go to that strap around your head. You'd never want that, right? Um, but in terms of like a consumer wearable, it's hands down the best for sleep tracking. I absolutely believe that. And then you have like Garmin watches and whoops and all these things. So there might be better activity trackers. That's the thing. The Aura Ring is not the best activity tracker. Now, what I do love about the Aura Ring, what I don't love about the Aura Ring is you have to enter the activity that you're doing. So I'll have to say like strength training, hard, 30 minutes, enter, and then see like all it's telling you is how many calories you burned, right? And calories don't really matter to me. So it doesn't really help me in terms of fitness, but you have to enter your activity. Like if you're not entering your activity level in the aura ring, then you're going to get skewed data because it needs to know like how much you need to sleep. Like if you did sprints for 20 minutes and didn't put that in your aura ring and then you slept six hours, it's go the algorithm is going to get tweaked. That's the only thing I don't like about Aura Ring is like you have to enter the activity and they make you pick things. So like if I'm swinging kettlebells, kettlebells are blasting tons of calories. It's extremely glycolytic, right? But they don't have an option for kettlebells. So I think in my head like what's the closest to swinging kettlebells for 20 minutes? Okay, probably rowing, probably very hard rowing and they have rowing in there. So I'll do that, right? Or, you know, it tracks your normal steps and everything. So if you're walking out and you have your ring on, you don't really need to track that. But it's like when I train jujitsu, right? Like I rolled hard for an hour. What is that in terms of activity? I don't really know. So I'll do like, it was a moderate jog or a hard jog for an hour or whatever, and just kind of let it calculate the calories and do its own thing. Now, what I do like is on days that you're not training, when you don't train at all, what's really cool about it, let me see if I can pull this up. I don't know if I'll be able to show it on the screen. But what's really cool about it is like today, today was not a training day for me. I did this crazy mass gains lift on Monday and I take three days of rest after those lifts because they're extremely challenging. They crush my whole body, right? So when I am taking those three days off, I might actually lift tomorrow, but we'll see. Um, so I didn't do any activity today besides just living, right? So I can look at my activity and say that today, just based on what the aura ring tracked, I have burned 2,413 calories. How does it know that? Because it takes my age, height, and weight, and it calculates for my BMR. It just takes a basal metabolic rate, right? This is what Justin's going to burn just if he was laying on the couch. Then it takes my steps and everything on, on top of that. So I've only burned 319 calories today in terms of just walking around doing things, right? So that 319 is getting tacked onto my BMR. It's saying my total daily burn is 2,413 calories. This is very good for women to see. I love when women get an aura ring. If you have an aura ring and you haven't clicked on that activity and seen just what your daily burn is, and then you take a look at the fact that you are, you know, most people, most women that come to me on a diet are eating like 900 calories or 1100 calories or whatever. And then they go in their daily burn. They're like, holy crap, I burned 1650 calories today, right? Yeah, you're starving yourself. Don't do that. Things are going to start to break down, you know? So again, going back to the example we just used, this low calorie, low fat diet, all these things. The aura ring is great for just teaching you about your body. I love that it tracks HRV multiple times throughout the night, about a dozen times throughout the night because HRV is critical for your readiness score in the morning. gives you an overall readiness score. So for those of you that don't know Aura Ring, this isn't going to be awesome for you, but you should totally check out Aura Ring. I might do a screen recording at some point and throw it up in the academy um, of just what Aura Ring actually does, right? So it'll give you a readiness score. It'll tell you about your sleep. It'll give you a sleep score. Uh, your, your day before activity, it tracks all your trends, tells you when to go to bed. It's just wonderful, right? I really, really love it. And I like it for measuring things like, if there's a night where I don't use my sauna and take a cold shower, I will get less sleep. This is across the board after measuring hundreds of nights of sleep, right? I know that if I do sauna, cold shower, bed, I sometimes will get an additional hour of deep sleep. It's crazy. Like my deep sleep percentage will just go off the charts. So my deep sleep improves drastically. For me, it's like the money I spent on that sauna, totally worth it. If I'm just getting a huge percentage more of deep sleep every night while I'm sleeping, absolutely worth it, right? So I try to do that every single day. Um, it's a little tricky because I'm at mom's house because the AC is dead in my house where my whiteboard is and everything. So I literally, mom lives 13 doors down. She lives on my road. So I drive home, get in the sauna, take a cold shower, drive here, go to bed. It's like, because I just don't want to miss that sauna time because that deep sleep is so critical to me. So yes, to answer your question, I think the Aura Ring is the best sleep tracker on the market. I think it is the best overall health 
monitoring program. But if you are an athlete, like if you're a CrossFit athlete or something, one, you're going to have to take it off all the time because of things like deadlifts. Deadlifts are really the only thing that worry me about this ring is like actually cracking them with a deadlift. If your deadlift weight's heavy enough, of course, you'd have, you have to lift hundreds of pounds to crack this thing. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I think it's great in terms of activity trackers. Like if you're an athlete or something and you're really looking for like really strong recovery data and all these things, you might want something like a whoop or a better activity tracker. But I think for tracking steps, for tracking activity, for, I mean, for tracking steps, for tracking sleep, for tracking HRV, for tracking total calorie burn, all these things, it's absolutely wonderful. And for tracking fitness trends, it's really great. Cause you can even see like, oh man, I've been going to bed an hour and a half later than I wanted to for the last two weeks. No wonder I feel like crap. You can look back at trends and it gives you a weekly report as well. This is how you did on bedtime this week. This is how you did with your activity goals. This is how you did with blah, 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 blah. Really great. So if you don't have an Aura Ring, uh, go to Aura Ring, O-U-R-A, ring.com and check it out. It's totally wonderful. I love it. What else we got? Finally sleeping through the night due to changing my bedtime routine and diet with Clovis. I'm still really struggling to get out of bed in the morning, even after a full seven to eight hours of sleep, and I'm tired throughout the day. Is there something I'm missing? Yeah, you haven't done that enough. Um, this is very real. And you can talk. Uh, read Matthew Walker's book, Why We Sleep. Um, one of the scariest books I've ever read just because of how sleep is critically important. You have to think, our sleep was never disrupted until the invention of the light bulb. That's really what it was. Obviously, life is way more awesome now with light bulbs than it was when we were sleeping in caves. But it was never a thing of like, when do you go to bed? How late do you stay up? No, it's dark now, go to bed. Oh, it's light now, get up and do stuff, right? That's literally the way that humans have worked forever until the advent of this, you know, the light bulb, which allows us to stay up all through the night or whatever. Now, I am very similar to Laura. I need a ton of sleep. Um, I need a ton of sleep based on just my life in general. I demand an extremely high cognitive load um, for myself. I've done a lot of things like nootropics and, you know, meditation, and I run multiple companies, and I do all these. Now I'm an Airbnb owner and also run multiple companies and play gigs and do Clovis and work out and do biohacking and all these crazy things and learn and research for you guys, right? So it's a huge cognitive load, and then I'm fit and active, and I do all these things as well, right? So I need a lot of sleep in general, but when I first got done uh, playing bar gigs when I was playing to like four in the morning and then I was using like new vigil or pro vigil during the week so I could have energy to get through the day managing Clovis and then on the weekends I'd stay up till four in the morning five in the morning whatever when I was dealing with like shift work sleep disorder is what they call it and I was going through all that stuff when I finally got away from bar gigs the first several weeks not several days the first several weeks that I got done with bar gigs I didn't set an alarm um now that's wonderful for me because I run Clovis and I work from home. If you don't, then you just need to find a way to get into bed at like 8.30 p.m. I'm not kidding. Like get in bed at 8.30 p.m. I don't care if in the early stages you need to dose melatonin. Like take like the Onnit melatonin spray. I love the Onnit melatonin spray or get something like Doc Parsley Sleep Remedy. Doc Parsley Sleep Remedy uh, and you get a discount on both of these as a I Am Clovis member, Onnit spray or the Doc Parsley Sleep Remedy. Um, I think it's a great idea for you to manipulate your sleep cycles in the beginning, I don't recommend doing this long term or doing this forever, but make it so that you can go to bed earlier. Shut down screens one, maybe two hours before you go to bed. Not a single screen are you looking at. Like if you do all the sleep hacking techniques, AMA number 10 is called sleep hacking and personal freedom. If you watch AMA number 10 or listen to AMA number 10 and do all of those sleep hacks, really get it down, which is what I did. I was a sleep ninja for a long time. And then you need to let yourself sleep as much as you need to right? That's it. And I know uh, I'm speaking from a place of privilege here. I don't care if you got to get a, get a hotel or rent an Airbnb to do it. It's that important. I know a lot of you have kids. I know a lot of you have husbands or wives sleep in a different bed. I'm telling you, I don't know if I'm ever going to get married because my wife better be cool with having separate beds. Beds are made for sleeping y'all. That's it, right? You want to come wake me up in the morning and have cuddle time and hank it, hank it time, whatever you want to do, right? But I'm totally going to have my own bed. So future wife, whoever you are, if I ever get married, I don't know how I feel about the whole thing, but um, yeah, I mean, I will totally have my own bed. I think everybody should, right? My room has blackout curtains. When you are in that room at noon, you can't tell it's daytime. That's the way my bedroom works. You can't tell it's daytime. There's a dome noise making machine, not a fan because the fan can mess up your respiratory stuff, right? It's like, it's insanity. I mean, like I'm ass, I have a crazy pillow because I got hit by a car and 
did jujitsu and was a boxer and all these things. So my neck is super jacked up. So I have to sleep with a particular pillow, have this eye mask. My house automatically cools to 66 degrees an hour before I go to bed. I have this dome machine. The lights in my house are only red lights. My curtains are blackout curtains. That is what sleep is for everybody. I try to emulate a cave in the middle of the woods that no one can get a speck of light in. No moonlight, no sunlight, nothing, right? That's what I'm trying to do. So what you need to do is make up the sleep deficit. And some of you have years worth of sleep deficits. And the unfortunate part is you can't actually make up sleep deficit. That's what the data has shown. That's what Matthew Walker talks about in his book. You can't make up sleep deficit. It's really tricky. So like if you pull an all nighter and try to sleep nine hours the next night, like you're not, you're not helping anything. That all nighter is going to have a tremendously negative impact on you. Even one night of sleep, one night of sleep even impacts insulin and blood glucose levels. It's insane, right? So sleep is super important. So I suggest that however you can, you need to have a string of multiple days at least, if not a couple weeks, where you just get to sleep until you wake up. That's it. And I know a lot of people are like, well, you don't understand. My eyes open at 5 a.m. If your eyes just randomly open at 5 a.m., it's because your nighttime routine sucks or your nutrition sucks or something like that. Now, you being Clovis, right, you have a nice bedtime routine and your Clovis. So I would imagine if you've been doing this for quite some time, if you don't set an alarm, you're probably going to be able to sleep longer than you think you would. And a lot of people really, really need to take time to do that. It's super important. What else we got? Makes sense, especially since it's still dark when I'm supposed to get up in the morning. Yeah, exactly. You need to go to bed way, way early. I read before bed an actual book, but I have not updated my light bulbs. Yep, that's really big. If you don't update your light bulbs and you need to get true dark glasses. Guys, you get a discount on them as I am, Clo on, as I am Clovis members. I cannot recommend enough. These are just the day walkers. These are like the amber yellow ones, but I highly recommend you get the, uh, what are they called? I think they're, uh, I think they're called twilight, true dark twilight. They are red, red, like red. Sorry, it's reverse. They're red. Like these roses are behind me in this picture, like completely red tricks your brain into thinking it is nighttime, like blackout nighttime. If you do not have red bulbs, you should at least be reading with those true dark twilights on. Get a pair of those. It is worth every single penny. If you have to buy three of them, it's still worth every penny. I'm telling you, go get those immediately. All right, what else we got here? Questions. Okay, so uh, this is a good one. If you're following a low-carb diet, now I've talked about this kind of ad nauseum, but I want to throw this out there because if the question's getting asked, it means that there's newbies that are wondering about it. If you're following a low-carb diet, how much fat should you eat? From my understanding, fat is a lever in which you adjust according to your goals. Is this correct? Yes, that's of course correct. So I've talked about this a lot. I talked about this in Basics of Human Metabolism. I talk about this in Red Meat Myths. I talk about this in Fat Loss Basics, um, a lot of AMAs, right? So fat and carbohydrates are both the lever. So I think of them as the lever, not levers. I don't think of them as like levers for fat loss. I think of them as the lever for fat loss. The, the, the real scale here for fat loss is protein versus energy. So we have three macros, fat, protein, net carbohydrates. But in reality, it's two macro categories, one protein, two fat and carbohydrates, energy, one protein, two energy. If we think of macros like that, energy is the lever that you're talking about. So yes, fat is a lever and carbohydrates are a lever. I find that the vast, vast majority of people do much better eating more fat than they do carbohydrates. Every single human on earth, even if you're on a quote unquote low fat diet, most of your calories should still be coming from fat. That's what people don't realize because fat has more than two times the calories per gram right? So even if you're eating 50% of your daily calories from fat, that's going to be like a low fat diet. You know, it's a, it's a pretty low intake of fat, but there's so many calories in those fat grams. That's where people get confused. Or even if we look at this trend of the carnivore diet, right? When we look at people eating a carnivore diet, everyone goes, oh my goodness, all that protein, all that protein, all that protein's bad for you. No, if you're on a well-formulated carnivore diet, let's say you're eating nothing but ribeye steaks, you're basically getting a one for one gram uh, ratio in terms of fat and protein. So if you were to break that down on a caloric level, then you're looking right around somewhere 70% of your daily calories from fat and 30% of your daily calories actually coming from protein, right? You can't just eat, you know, you can't take collagen protein, which is pure protein and just like drink it in water and get all your calories for the day. You would die. That's what rabbit starvation is. Um, if you don't have enough fat, you die. 
So I want you to remember that when you're thinking of this lever thing, that yes, for body fat loss, you need to deal with the lever of energy, fat and carbohydrates. You need to manipulate those to get to the leanness that you want to get with your body fat percentage, but you have to be very careful because if you're just getting lean at the expense of eating enough energy, then all of a sudden you're gonna have hormonal problems, you're gonna have energy problems. We just talked about sleep. You're gonna have serious sleep issues, right? Like you can get to six, five, four percent body fat if you want to, just like going on a rabbit starvation diet, they'll get very lean very quickly. There's actually something called a protein sparing modified fast. If you Google this PSMF, protein sparing modified fast, sometimes when people want to lose weight really quickly, they'll do a protein sparing modified fast for say seven days where they're still eating. Like, you know, some people eat up to 1500 calories a day of pure protein. So this would be an example would be like, you know, supplementing collagen protein and maybe really lean, boneless, skinless chicken breasts or something and what like egg whites, something like that, right? So you're basically doing an all protein diet. You will lose body fat very quickly, very, very quickly, but it is not designed for the long term. Again, rabbit starvation, you die. Eventually without fat, you die. Carbohydrates, you can live a long, happy life, never eating a single gram of carbohydrate again, right? So that's what you have to think of. If we have one lever, which is this energy macronutrient of fat and carbohydrates, but only one of them is essential for human survival, fat, not carbohydrates. Which one do you think you should be making most of your diet come from? Do you think it should be the essential macronutrient that without you die? Or do you think most of your diet should come from the non-essential macronutrient that is not required in any way, shape, or form for human survival? I know that my vote goes to fat, right? So that's the thing. And you just need to understand that that lever, the fat lever is very important, but the carbohydrate lever, in my opinion, is more important. But yes, at the end of the day, if you're drinking eight bulletproof coffees a day and you think you're going to lose body fat, it is not going to happen, right? Because I've talked about the fat loss gas tank. If you're just dumping in exogenous fat all the time, fat bombs and MCT oil and exogenous ketones and whatever fancy thing you wasted your money on on Amazon, um, you're going to burn that. You have to burn that energy before you can burn stored adipose tissue, before you can burn your body fat. That's the big thing that drives me nuts about ketones. People buy like Prove It and Keto OS. Yes, I just called out brands. Mm, right? Keto OS, Prove It, all these things like immediately puts you in fat burning mode. No, it doesn't, dummy. It puts ketones in your blood and you're forced to burn them, right? Ketones only exist in the blood when the body has to burn fatty acids to create ketones. If you just dump a bunch of ketones down your mouth, then yes, you're going to have ketones in your blood and your body is going to have to deal with them. You've just given it an energy surplus, a massive energy surplus that it has to deal with. It's not going to burn your body fat while it's busy burning the prove it and keto OS that you dumped in your system, right? That's just the way it works. So yes, to answer your question, fat is a lever, absolutely. To answer your question on how much fat you need, no idea. Um, and that is why I make custom nutrition plans because you could be 5'2", you could be 6'2", you could be 300 pounds, you could be 150 pounds. It varies on the person. This is why I like making custom nutrition plans for people. Um, for instance, we've talked about women usually come to me tremendously under eating, right? That happens a lot. So I don't want to just tell you some random number of fat. Like that is that is specific to the individual. I can't even guess at that, which something like carbohydrates, we can make these kind of blunt you know, suggestions of if you're eating less than 50 grams of net carbohydrates, that's considered a low carbohydrate diet. If you're eating less than 30 grams of net carbohydrates a day, you're probably going to go into ketosis pretty easily. That's probably a ketogenic level carbohydrate intake. Those are really the only blanket statements that we have are for net carbohydrates or people think, you know, they're blanket statements for protein. You want at least, I think you want at least 0 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Some people do per pound of lean body weight, which is, but then you need to know your body fat percentage. And most Americans don't know their body fat percentage. So that gets a little bit tricky. But in terms of fat, there's really no blanket statement for fat. Um, I have heard it said, guys like Ted Naiman have said that an average person um, just sitting around, if they were eating a zero carbohydrate diet, their energy needs for baseline, no fat loss, no caloric deficit, just like caloric maintenance would be around 150 grams of fat for like an average person, right? So that's if you're eating no carbohydrates, right? So remember, if you're eating a ton of carbohydrates, you have to lower um, total fat. If you're eating a ton of fat, you have to lower carbohydrates because those work like a lever as well. Okay, now I'm ranting and rambling, but this is just a really big topic. And you know, at what expense are you getting the body fat down? You have to think about that as well. 
Emily, we use blackout shades for our kids. Best money we've ever spent, 100%. That's the other thing. Parents, right? Man, I love, you guys know there's nothing better to me than when parents are like, my kid's just picky. He'll only eat pizza and Pringles and hot dogs. That's all he likes, and it's better that I feed him that than nothing. And I'm like, no, that's not all he likes. That's what you introduced him to. And that's what other well-meaning grown-ups introduced him to. Because I promise you, a one- or two-year-old who has never seen the outside world or had sugar introduced to their taste buds will scarf down a bunch of eggs and liver before you can blink an eye, right? It will eat that. The little baby will eat that stuff, no problem. But once you hijack their entire system by giving them this white devil dust called sugar, all of a sudden, now they're super picky, right? The same thing happens with kids when it's like, you don't understand, Justin. My kid won't sleep through the night. Was your kid on an iPad or an Xbox up until you said, time for bed, go brush your teeth, turn off the screen, go brush your teeth? So now the kid was staring at the screen like this, call of duty, right? Or iPad, little Alex opening presents. Look, a new fire truck, whatever he's watching on YouTube, right? And then you take the iPad away, go brush your teeth, brushes his teeth. Ten minutes later, he's laying in bed like this. Ah, mommy wants me to go to bed. This is crazy. I can't. My brain is not producing any melatonin right now because I just had a blue light shining in my eyeballs for the last three hours. And now mom is mad at me because I won't go to bed. Why is mom always mad at me? Mom's mad at me because I like Doritos. Mom's mad at me because I won't go to bed. Mom's mad at me for everything. Guess what, mom? You did it. Sorry. I know, guys. I know my preaching on childhood has been getting meaner and meaner, but it's just like, God, when are we going to wake up? When are people going to wake up? I just don't get it. Like, go on the True Dark website and get these for your kid. Yes, they have them in kid sizes. Swannies have them in kid sizes. True Dark has them in kid sizes. You can get the red ones, and kids think it's awesome that they get to run around the house in red goggles and everything's red. Like, your five-year-old is going to think that's awesome. Be like, dude, these are Spider-Man goggles. They're red, right? And when you put these on, you look like Spider-Man to everybody else. Run around with these Spider-Man things, right? Awesome. That's how you do it, everybody. For real. Like, stop setting your kids up for failure. It's, it's, it's horrible to me. You just set your kid up for failure, and you're mad at them. You got to fight with them all the time. Going to bed is a fight. Getting up in the morning is a fight. Dinner time is a fight because all they want to eat is junk food, right? You gave them the junk food. You gave them the iPad. You gave them the Xbox. You gave them the TV, right? What are we doing? Stop setting kids up for failure. So blackout shades, yes. She, anyway, long story short, I'm ranting because you bought blackout shades for your kids. Best money you've ever spent. Absolutely. Get blue blockers for your kids. Best money you've ever spent. Read your kid books, not iPads, at night. Best money you've ever spent. Blackout curtains for your kids. Best money you've ever spent. If you have to do night lights, use red bulb night lights. Do not use normal night lights. Get make the lamps in your kids' room red lights. They will think it's awesome. I promise you. They will think it's very cool. Okay. What else we got? My kids like to watch the survival show alone. One of the guys was able to kill a moose. Due to the meat being so lean, he's literally starving himself and still losing an obscene amount of weight due to little to no fat. Yes, exactly, because body fat accumulation is basically decided on by energy macronutrients, not by protein. My questions would all be horribly inappropriate, but I love you, and that's all that matters. What's up, Tyson? Your questions would – I would actually love your questions. Don't worry. Uh, If you're worried about inappropriate, haven't seen enough of my AMAs, brother. But I know you. You'd probably go down a a different road than these folk. That's one of my musician friends, everybody. Bunch of degenerates. <laughs> Sue, what's up? How you doing? Judy, I got the custom nutrition plan. Forgot to tell you I had my gallbladder removed. Yeah, you definitely got to tell me that. Huge thing. Wow. This makes me go crazy with nutrition too. Is like people come to me and they just, these things are just normal, everybody. You guys know that eighty over 82% of all people are insulin resistant right now? Over 82% of Americans have metabolic syndrome. It's just normal. Right? We just think that it's normal. People think that, like, got my gallbladder removed, no big deal. 30 of my friends have no gallbladder either. And the doctor told me I don't have to change my diet or anything. He just took it out, and my insurance company paid him a shitload of money, and he went on his merry way in his BMW, right? Yeah, you got to tell me that. So people need to tell me these things about gallbladders. Now, does anything change with the gallbladder? No. You just need to take digestive enzymes every day, forever. That's just the way it is, right? And I have my particular brands of enzymes I like. I'm actually toying with a new enzyme. I might make an enzyme, actually, because the enzyme market kind of upsets me a little bit. So uh, there might be a new Clovis product in the works. A lot of things I'm working on behind the scenes right now. 
But all that it means is that you can't regulate the digestion of fatty of fatty acids properly. Not fatty acids because you're digesting triglycerides, stored fat is triglycerides, same for animals, right? So you have to break down these fats, these triglycerides, break them apart into their single fatty acids so they can cross the small intestine, they can get into the bloodstream, right? They need to be able to pass through the bloodstream, so they have to be fatty acids. They need to be broken apart. Bile acids are namely responsible for doing that. There's a lot of things involved, right? But you just can't regulate. Your gallbladder regulates squirting out little amounts of, of bile into the system based on what's coming in, right? So it's very, very important that you give your body what it needs. Now, some people will just go with like a standard ox bile digestive enzyme. I don't like that. I like things like Biogest by Thorne. Um, now Foods has a good super enzyme. Bio optimizers have really good enzymes, really good enzymes, but they're super, super pricey. Um, so that's a little tricky, but you really want like lipase is the is a, a, a digestive enzyme that you need. There's amylase, there's um, protease, which is like the enzyme that helps break down proteins, right? So there's multiple different enzymes that you want to use to help you break down particular macronutrients. So you definitely want these ox biles, right? Like ox bile is one. Um, and HCL is usually in a really good digestive enzyme. That's another acid that's going to help you break down those fatty acids, right? Because the option, a low fat diet is not an option, right? We just, just, we just talked about this a lot without fat, you die. So it's not that you need to remove the fats. You just need to be able to break those fats down and not having a gallbladder makes it far more difficult to break those fatty acids down, break them down into fatty acids, right? So you need digestive enzymes. That's it. So yes, if you want to email me and remind me of that, and I can send you that, um, yeah, a lot, this will happen a lot of times. I'll have clients come to me and it's, I've been working with them for three months and they'll tell me some super critical piece of information that they didn't think I needed to know because they just think it's normal. Right. Um, really tricky. So, uh, Paul Saladino just did a great podcast with Tommy Wood from Nourish Balance Thrive, which is a podcast that I love. Those guys are brilliant. And, uh, he talked about Peter Atia talks about this speech as well. There's a speech called this is water and paraphrasing. It's just this, um, uh, an older fish says to two younger fish, like, how's the water today? And the two younger fish are like, what water? Right. They live in water. They don't know what it is. They can't realize it. Right. So that's the thing is we live in a world of sick people. And this is Paul used the same analogy. So I'm just stealing it from Paul. Thanks, Paul. What's up, brother? Um, so the analogy of this is water. It's like what the water is for us is metabolic disease, chronic disease. The water in America is just swarmed, filled with nasty, festering, chronic disease and metabolic syndrome and metabolic dysfunction, right? That's what we live in. When you have, it's somewhere between, it's like 82 or 84% of the population has metabolic syndrome, like at least early stages of insulin resistance. 54% of children right now have chronic disease. 54% of children, 50% of adults have at least one of chronic disease, right? So we're looking at this thing of just like, we don't even know what studies what clinical nutrition studies on a guy like me would look like because we don't have that data. All we've ever studied is a sick population. That's it. Nutrition science really tells us next to nothing. It's kind of tricky. So that's the thing. That's the this is water speech, which is it's a commencement speech that was given at a university, I believe. But yeah, that's the thing is, you know, not having a gallbladder is normal. So people don't tell me about it or having type 2 diabetes is normal. So people don't tell me about it. You know, it's really, really tricky. What else we got here? Okay, this one was cool too, um, and I can provide some resources here. This says, would love to know more on pregnancy nutrition as currently pregnant. Also, a single spot with the compilations of all the breastfeeding tidbits you have dropped in podcast. That way, uh, I can refer more friends. All right, here's the deal. If somebody goes and wants to tell me minute markers for all the times that I've talked about breastfeeding and pregnancy, do it, and I'll pay you. I don't know what I'll pay you, but I'll literally send you money. Um, I just don't have time to do those things. I, it's, it's impossible. It's, I have over 150 plus hours. So it's a great recommendation. I would love to do, like, I would love to just share with you, like, here's every time I've talked about breastfeeding. Here's a compilation of every time I've talked about pregnancy. Like, if you do that for me, I'll just Venmo you money. Like, I'm not kidding. Just literally. Anybody who wants to work for Clovis, this is the kind of stuff that I need done. I'm not kidding. These kind of tasks that I just can't get to, right? Or you'll see now, like the new Amazon skill, I need these 60 second to 90 bit second sound bites and I need them endlessly. I need 365 of them a year, you know? So I need people to go in. You guys want to go in and dig and edit my content or just look at minute markers and send me minute markers and email me justin at imclovis.com. I'll just send you money. I'm not kidding. Like I'll Venmo it to you. That's it. You're all freelancers now. You're hired. I talk all the time about how everybody should be working online and making money from their pajamas, right? That's what you should be doing. So um, if you want to, let's do the thing. I'm not even kidding. Shoot me an email. Um, but yeah, I would love to have a resource of all the times I talk about breastfeeding and stuff. But in terms of pregnancy nutrition, pregnancy nutrition is Clovis. 
you guessed it. Ah, it's not different, right? That's the thing. It, people think it's different. It's so strange to me that people think this is so different. Um, in America, we have this idea of like, you're eating for two, you better have another piece of cheesecake and another big gulp of Diet Coke, right? You really, the idea of eating for two is super legit. Like you're growing a person inside of you. So yes, you need to eat way more food, way more food, way more food than you think way more food is. That's how much food you need to be eating, right? And you need to be focusing on nutrient density, particularly things like liver, right? Uh, beef liver, gram for gram, the most micronutrient dense food on planet earth. You need to focus on nutrient density. Nutrient density is where things like you know, after the baby is born in particular, things like breast milk production and all these things, people worry about production. If you're struggling with production, you have micronutrient deficiencies. That's what's happening. You don't have enough micronutrients for your body to do what you're demanding it to do. You're probably not eating enough in general. You're definitely not eating enough red meat, definitely not eating enough uh, protein. You know, I'm not saying you, the person that asked this question, I'm talking about people that struggle with milk supply. But the same thing goes back to pregnancy in general, right? So it's not that your diet is any different. It's that you need to eat a lot more food and we can say there's some nuance. Now, where the real nuance comes in is that a lot of women just get super sick, right? A lot of women get so sick when they're pregnant that they just have to eat what they can get down. And I totally get that. Like, I'll give an example. Like, there's a brilliant doctor, Ander, uh, Amber McPherson, I think is her name. She's keto carnivore on Instagram. But she was talking about this. Like, she was on a full-blown carnivore diet. And, like, her health was thriving. And then she got pregnant and intended on keeping that up and just eating way more food and got so sick. I mean, debilitatingly like bedridden sick that like all she could get down was like processed carbohydrates and you do have to eat when you're pregnant, you know? So that's the tricky thing. I don't know how to cure that. If you get endlessly sick while you're pregnant, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on the internet. I don't know how to fix that. Even normal doctors don't know how to fix that. And you have to be careful because they're usually trying to give you pills and potions to fix that, which can be very detrimental, right? So assuming that you're pregnant and healthy and you're not getting super sick and you can get foods down, you just need to eat more Clovis, 100%. That's what you want to do. And sure, we can talk about like prenatals. There are, um, there's a list, I'll put it in the show notes, but Rhonda Patrick has a whole uh, list of everything that she did during her pregnancy and Rhonda Patrick is brilliant, but she didn't take much. Like I think it was in, she talks about pregnancy like in her trimesters, right? So she talks about like the first and second trimester. She really didn't supplement much. I think she took a prenatal um, a multivitamin from Thorn. Yeah, Thorn has a prenatal multivitamin that she took. I know that she takes um, uh, Nordic Naturals, Omega-3s, and I believe she supplemented vitamin D. And those were like the first two uh, trimesters. I've read this article sometimes, but I think it was the first two trimesters. And then the third trimester, I'm pretty sure um, she added in other things. Like I know she added in iron, but again, you don't know if you need iron that could be totally different for you. That's based on her blood work. Right. Um, but really it's like the omega-3 fatty acids, the prenatal. I know she added in VisBiome probiotics. Um, so you could consider something like VisBiome or you can consider something like just thrive, which is a really well studied probiotic. Um, but generally speaking, pregnancy nutrition is human nutrition, right? It's just a lot more of it. And now I would argue, I like the idea of the supplementing the omega-3s, uh, particularly from Nordic Naturals. I like the idea of the prenatal for micronutrient density. I also think you should be eating a lot of organ meats. Um, but yeah, the omega-3s are great just for brain development. And DHA in the brain is a huge deal. Um, vitamin D also really important. If you do have an iron deficiency, then you definitely want to supplement iron. Wow. I don't even want to say that you should do X while you're pregnant. I can't say that I am the not a doctor. This is not medical advice, all that stuff. Right. But, um, generally speaking, it's just, it's just human nutrition, not necessarily pregnancy nutrition. You know, I wish I could redo my pregnancies with Clovis. Yeah, I know. I, I have a feeling that a lot of moms feel that way, you know, but you do the best you can at the time. Right. I can't imagine how amazing I would have felt, but luckily I started just after having my third still breastfeeding at eight months where I stopped at four months before. Amazing. That's fantastic. Yes. Keep going. Keep going. It's awesome, right? A uh, good little trick for, for milk production. There's a couple crazy tricks for milk production. One is liver, eat a bunch of liver. Two is actually, if you can get your hands on raw dairy, um, raw dairy actually seems to work really well, particularly raw milk. Um, I actually met the CEO of Organic Pastures this past weekend, and he was talking to me about that. And there were some moms in the group that actually confirmed that. They were just like, yeah, I started drinking raw milk and would run out of bottles while pumping. Like they were, they were pumping breast milk and literally like didn't have enough bottles. It just wouldn't stop coming. Um, so that could be a, a little hack for those of you out there that are breastfeeding. If you're dealing with milk supply or anything like that, it seems to uh, more than one mom was like, yep, I tried raw milk and it was crazy. Like I, I couldn't stop. So, uh, that's a really cool hack that got me, uh, really, 
really happy, excited. Um, all right, let's see. We got a couple minutes here. You guys have any questions that you want to ask directly in the group? I know I tend to focus on these pre-submitted questions. It just makes it a little bit easier because I have them in front of me. But if anybody has anything they want to pop in here, so if it's quiet in the comments, I'll tend to go to these pre-asked questions just to keep the flow going well. But we're live and we're just hanging out. So if you guys have anything you want to ask me, um, let me know. I'm going to go into my little inbox here and see what else we got here. Um, yeah, I'm having a hard time hitting my carbs. It's super easy for me to go over my protein. Any suggestions? That's an easy one. Sweet potatoes exist, everybody. That's literally it. That's the lever, right? Because I know all of your net carbohydrate intakes are not, unless you're like a super athlete, are going to be less than 70 grams of net carbohydrates. You know, so most of you as women, you're probably going to be somewhere between like 30 to 50 grams net carbs. Literally eat half a sweet potato or eat a whole medium sweet potato and get like, it's like 27 grams of net carbs. It's not hard to hit carbohydrates. Just pick a source and go with it. Um, things like, you know, um, I actually really like turnips. Like turnips are pretty great. Uh, carrots are pretty decent. And then you have um, sweet potato. Again, sweet potatoes are really like the go-to, but it's really not that difficult. It's just pick a source that's a high carbohydrate food that's approved. And this is why I was also say sit down the approved foods list and study it. Go through foods and see what the carbohydrate intake is because you might be able to, you know, go through half a sweet potato a day and crush your net carbs. Perfect. That's awesome. Perfect. Now, if you're going way over on protein and not going over on fat simultaneously, it means you're picking the wrong cuts of meat. Um, so if you're just skyrocketing over protein, but you're hitting your fat, then that means you're probably eating like boneless, skinless chicken breast, which is like not a whole lot of micronutrients. I really don't like chicken as a food in general. It's approved. It's fine. It's not going to hurt you or anything. I just think it's kind of a waste food. You know, like it just gives you nothing in terms of micronutrients compared to like a grass fed ground beef or a ribeye steak or something like that. So if you're skyrocketing over protein without skyrocketing over fat, it means your, your meat is too lean. Uh, try different cuts of meat or different animals. And if you're not hitting your carbohydrates, you need to pick a source that you like. I recommend sweet potatoes because they're delicious. Sweet potatoes and coconut aminos sauteed in some grass fed butter. What? That's candy. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Right? So throw it on there and, um, yeah, that's exactly how you do it. So what else we got here? Carla. Carla, we did this. Yeah, we did it. So um, why is your stomach such a disaster after a 48-hour fast? Yeah, that's uh, AMA number. It's in the title of the AMA that we did that on. Um, yeah, we did a deep dive. Let me see here. It was – I know that we did this because we talked – because it's always fun when I get to talk about diarrhea on – podcast. So there might have been an AMA that you missed and haven't gone back and watched. Let's see. Yeah, AMA number 76. Um, AMA number 76 is called the blood type diet, gout, breaking a fast, and kids macros. So that whole breaking a fast portion of that AMA was all about why people get diarrhea after fasts. And I explain the whole thing. I talk about autophagy, apoptosis. I talk about um, detoxification. I talk about the metabolism turning off and then turning back on, talk about the whole thing. So go watch AMA number 76 or um, check out the Clovis Culture Podcast. You can just listen to it on the podcast or go to clovis.show. But AMA number 76 was where we addressed breaking a fast and all that. So let's hit this one real quick. I sometimes feel hungry even on the days I hit my macros right on. It's almost like my body wants more food and I crave red meat like hamburger, steaks, etc. Is this normal or all in my head? Yes, this is 100% normal. Remember, your body doesn't crave macronutrients in general. It craves micronutrients. Your body is looking for nutrients. It doesn't have food cravings. It has nutrient cravings, okay? So if you're craving things like red meat, it means you're craving micronutrients. Now, I've said this before. Most of you come to me with the goal of fat loss. So when I create your macronutrient plan, I'm going to have you at some kind of caloric deficit, deficit whether it's 10% or 20%, depends on your goals, right? So you're going to be at a caloric deficit if your goal is fat loss. If you come to me and you're just like, I want to feel amazing all the time, I'm going to put you at maintenance calories, maintenance macros. So that's great. But if you came to me for fat loss and you're telling me you're hungry at the end of the day and you want red meat, eat more red meat. Go for it. Absolutely go for it. Listen to your body. If your body's craving carbohydrates, don't listen to it. Um, but if it is craving, actually craving protein, that's actually quite rare. Like if you're craving red meat, then that means you, you probably, I don't want to scare you here, but if you're craving, craving red meat, you probably have a micronutrient deficiency. So you might have a deficiency in something like B vitamins or you might not be getting enough omega-3s or something like that, right? It's very important that you get these things. Micronutrient deficiencies are no joke. So if you're craving red meat, go eat more red meat. Now, don't go crazy and be like, I have a red meat craving. I'm going to eat two pounds of red meat because you're going to take in, you know, 
thousand calories extra in animal fat. You know, that's the thing. Because if you're craving red meat, then it's probably a micronutrient issue, which means that you're gonna want to get your hands on red meat. You're not gonna want to like go eat chicken, right? Because then you're just gonna skyrocket your protein, not get as much micronutrients. It's not really the best trade-off, right? So you could even try something like, um, you know, if you're craving red meat. What I like to do is take like a half pound or a quarter pound. Now, again, I don't know who asked this question, so you might be a five foot two woman, so you're not like me, um, but I'll take like a half pound of uh, grass-fed ground beef, just saute it in skillet, and then I'll take four egg yolks, just the yolks. I'll actually separate out the egg whites, throw the egg yolks on there, mix it around, sprinkle some coconut aminos. It's amazing. The egg yolks almost work like, like a sauce. It's almost like a condiment on the meat. Sprinkle a little bit of coconut aminos, a little bit of sea salt. Delicious, right? That would be a really, really micronutrient-dense thing to eat at the end of the day if you're um, – really feel like you're craving red meat, right? You're probably craving micronutrients, that's the thing. So, and as we know, the protein leveraging hypothesis, like if you don't eat enough protein, normally people will crave carbohydrates or fats. They'll crave energy. That's the protein versus energy level we, we talked about, right? Fat and carbs being energy and protein being protein. If you don't even eat enough protein, you're always gonna search for more energy. And I talked about this in AMA number 70, I can't remember, the red meat myths, but we talked about that, the protein leveraging hypothesis, which all mammals do in nature, right? What else we got? Carla, huh? I never missed one. What happened? Uh, I don't know. It's in AMA 76, and we touched on it for like a solid 10 minutes, I think. What else we got? I crave red meat. Yeah, then there you go. Eat red meat. That's the answer. And a lot of you, again, again, a lot of women come to me. I, I could pretty much guarantee, like most women that come to me, probably have a dozen micronutrient deficiencies by the time they get to me. Because what has everybody been doing for decades? They've just been like, I eat brown rice and boneless, skinless chicken breasts, or I eat brown rice and tilapia. That's what I did when I was a bodybuilder, right? We're literally just swimming in micronutrient deficiencies. So by the time you get here, it's like all of a sudden I give you a little taste of red meat and you're like, I crave red meat all the time. Oh my God, like I want ground beef and I want burgers and I want steaks and I want a big fat juicy ribeye. All these women in Clovis that are just like huge ribeye steak eaters. Why? Because you want them. You've wanted them for years, but you've deprived yourself because some clown told you that red meat causes cancer and that's not true, okay? So anyway, yeah, if you're craving protein, red meat, eat protein, red meat, go get you some. Don't go crazy, again, because of that energy lever. If your goal is fat loss, you're going to want to maintain a caloric deficit. But yeah, go for it. All right, AMA number 79. We touched on a lot of stuff here. What else we got? Anything else? Looks like that last comment there is I crave red meat. It's 9.06 p.m. here in Nashville, everybody. I got to go pick up my mom at the airport in a little bit. She comes in at, uh, I think, about 50 minutes, something like that. So I'll probably hit the sauna and cold shower. Then go see her. But I hope you guys enjoyed this, AMA number 79. Again, if you didn't watch or listen to AMA number 78, Your Kids Are a Science Experiment, you absolutely need to go watch that. I I still think right now, I think that's the single most important piece of content I've ever put out um, is that good of an AMA, right? Really, really important. And I also think that you should uh, check out the new Amazon skill if you have a device, if you have an Amazon Tap or an Amazon Echo, Echo Dot, any of those things, go into the skills and search for Clovis culture and then add Clovis culture to your flash briefing and start every morning with me, everybody, every morning with this voice, right? The Clovis culture audio experience, click the happy button, click the love button, click the smiley face, click the heart button, all the things that you need to click to tell me that you like the episode. I like these chill ones. It's cool to just hang here and talk with you guys for a while. Judy, thanks. You're very welcome. Judy, you're welcome. Both Judy's. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, click the share button. Share this one with your friends if you want to. But honestly, you can even skip sharing this one. Just go to my Facebook feed and find AMA number 78 or the podcast. It's also on Spotify and every major podcast platform. Grab AMA number 78, your kids are a science experiment. Share, share, share. I want to get off this Facebook Live and I want to have 30 notifications that everybody that watched this tonight shared your kids are a science experiment with their people on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to share it. Tag me, do all the things. Share AMA number 78, your kids are a science experiment. Please, please, please. All right, a lot happening behind the scenes with Clovis. New things will be launched by end of next week. Um, so that's really cool. Can't tell you about them just yet, but there's multiple Clovis programs that are going to be happening uh, very, very soon. So you guys will see some new stuff and you'll have new stuff to share with your friends and you'll have kind of beginner segments that, that can bring your friends in who might not be ready for a full-blown custom nutrition plan yet. So things are getting good, everybody. A lot of behind the scenes stuff happening, okay? I love you guys. My name is Justin Null. This is AMA number 79. Thanks for hanging with me. I appreciate it. Turn off the lights, get some blue blockers. Get some blue blockers, everybody. If you're an I Am Clovis member, get your discount, your Clovis discount. Get your blue blockers, get a good night's sleep. All right, guys, I will talk to you tomorrow in the Facebook groups. Love you. Good night. Bye. <laughs>